Hi everybody. I am here with Morgan Schwartz of Mystic Productions and we are in his studio right now. So Morgan is a glass blower and I'm here with him today because I wanted you to meet him and to watch and to learn a little bit about glass blowing and to also see some of his great pieces. So hi Morgan, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Good. Um, would you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you got into glass blowing? Sure. Well, I was uh, always interested in art in high school and decided to continue that and go to art school for college where I got my degree in art education uh, and hopes to be an art teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my buddies was doing glass and I was interested and got into it and started working for him for a little while. And then um, after college I took a class at the Corning Museum of Glass with a Venetian master. It was two weeks that really um, got me very inspired and it made me feel like this was something that I wanted to mm -hmm. devote myself to. And then I took another class out in Eugene, Oregon um, at the Eugene Glass School and learned from many other talented friends of mine mm -hmm. and just kind of stuck with it, threw a lot of glass out until I finally got the feel for it. and. Here I am today. And it's something you love to do. Yeah, it's Great. a lot of fun. Great. So you uh, you were telling me that you're using a particular technique and particular materials to do your glass blowing. Could you describe that for us? This technique is known as lamp working or flame working, which is basically manipulating the glass over a bench mounted torch. Um, and I'm also using rods and tubes of um, Pyrex glass or borosilicate, mm -hmm. which is a hard glass that was developed by Corning for the chemis chemistry supply industry. And um, it's just very forgiving and very good um, as an art media. Is this the type of glass that we're using in our kitchens, for example, for cooking? Corning? Yes, it's the exact same, same type? glass. Okay. Yep. Would you mind showing us some how you do some of your work? Sure. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm working on some holiday ornaments today, so okay. I think I'll make one of those. Yeah, and sounds then, uh, good. Alright, well, this is my torch. Um, it's pretty much the main tool that I use. It's fueled with oxygen and propane. And uh, there's actually an inner fire and an outer fire. Mm -hmm. So you can control the size of the flame. I have mine on a foot pedal right now. So I'm going to make a, a holiday ornament and I'm going to use a little piece of this flat rod. So you were describing another technique for glass blowing that doesn't involve this flame. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Right. For uh, a lot of the larger sculptures and vessels you'll see, they're done with uh, furnace work or offhand glass blowing, which is where the artist will actually start with a, a furnace full of molten glass mm -hmm. um, instead of these rods and tubes that I'm using. So right now you have a rod that you're like running across that bar and right. kind of melting glass onto it, right? Um, yeah, I'm laying stripes down basically mm -hmm. on one side of this rod. Okay. Yeah, and this is cobalt blue, which will pretty much stay exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those stripes are going in between the others. I don't know if you can see it. The flame is on it. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but you can see it now right here. Now I'm going to remove this side. So you did like an amber and a cobalt blue and now you're doing the blue for the loop. Right. Pretty. Yeah, it's already starting to turn into a spiral. Just 
kind of clamping on either side. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open that up and round it out. Mm -hmm. Now I just remove it, throw it in the kiln. Mm -hmm. hmm. Beautiful how a slab turned into that. Mm -hmm. So it would be great to uh, see some of the other pieces that you've made. Can you show us some of that? Sure. Oh, so you have a nice display here of different things. Let's see what you have. Wow, what's this? This um, is really interesting. That's a sculpture I made um, at the Eugene Glass School with um, when I was taking a workshop with Robert Mickelson, mm -hmm. who's one of um, my biggest inspirations. He's really been uh, at the head of the art industry with, mm -hmm. or the art movement with the borosilicate glass, and now uh, he's just someone I've always uh, looked up to in that in that world. Wow, it's really interesting. Does it have a name? Actually, it does. Surrealist Vessel. Surrealist Vessel. Yeah. Yeah, it does look a bit surreal. Your pieces are all very unique. Can you tell me um, where you get your inspiration for a lot of these? Uh, well, definitely nature uh, would be a main thing. A lot of flowers and mm -hmm. animal life, like frogs and turtles and fish, um, are definitely ideal shapes to make out of glass. Yeah. And also a lot of traditional um, glass blown forms like Venetian techniques of shaping of bottles and wine goblets and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the delicate look of the Venetian glass and also um, architecture and sea life. Um, mm -hmm. And also just a lot of just the amazing work I see on the internet. Just inspiring other artists that I look at. Mm -hmm. We've got some wine stoppers. And these have some interesting patterns in them. This this right here. How does that how do you get that? I actually use a pin cushion or a like a spike pad that I mash the glass onto and then use gravity to make it implode. Oh. So it's really interesting. It's a, it's very cool cool process yeah yeah here's some pretty jars with cork stoppers these are all pendants down here right yep oh it's so pretty got some like um, pendants are teardrops. always popular yeah got hearts this is really interesting too this uh effect in here what's That's this uh, dichroic glass mm -hmm. which is a coating on sheet glass that uh when it when it moves at all in the glass, it breaks into splinters and forms that sparkly stuff you see there. Yeah, your girlfriend makes jewelry, right? And she's using some of your pieces for right. For she jewelry. actually uh, works for a jeweler, mm -hmm. and uh, she helps me by stringing some of my pendants. Uh -huh. Yeah, very pretty. Like that. Wow, the lots of different beads too. Your pendants. Yeah. yeah, I like to make multiples of something to practice, so I'll make ten at a time just to really hone my skill on one thing before I move to the next, mm -hmm. and that's a good way to, you know, build up stock. I'll, you know, switch the colors and just do some variation on the shape and just, you know, keep on practicing, it's basically. Well, it's a good it way to, to build up your, your um, skills too, right? Get good right. at one all, technique and then move on yeah, to the next. It takes, takes a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. Even just not doing it for a day or two, you'll notice the difference. Really? So I try to blow glass for a few hours pretty much every day. Every day? Yep. So Morgan, thank you very much for taking the time today to uh, demonstrate glass blowing for us. Uh, it was fun to learn something about the the technique and I hope everybody out there learned a little bit about glass blowing as well and I hope you enjoyed seeing Morgan's demonstration and some of his work. And you are going to be at a um, craft show coming up? Um, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing one craft show at the Jewish Community Center in New Haven on December 6th and I'm also available to do lessons and custom orders. Um, you can get in touch with me 
at mystic glass with an I M I S T I C glass at gmail.com. Thank you. Thanks again. You're welcome. Take care, everyone.